Welcome to the Sunday morning worship service of the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama. to this service of worship of our living Lord, and I hope you find refreshment for your soul as we worship together today. Will you please join me in the call to worship that is found in your bulletin? Please stand if able. Come, God is leading us home. Our wandering is over at last. Come, God is leading us home. Home to the safe and prosperous place. Come, God is leading us home. Come, God is leading us home. Our lives have meaning and joy. Come, God is leading us home. Our souls have rest at last.
Presbyterian Church you follow, we are thankful you have chosen to worship with us today. I would like to point out to you several things that are in our um, bulletin today for our announcements. First, the flowers today are given to the glory of God and in honor of the U.S. Marine Corps uh, by Major uh, Fred McWaters and Mary McWaters. God bless America for those today. We will be um, having a congregational meeting immediately following the service for the nominating committee of class of 2020. The nominating committee will uh, nominate the elders, excuse me, for the class of 2020. And the slate for the committee are Arnie Cutchin, Terry Honan, Zoe Powell, Jim Bradley, and Ann Hawks. Uh, the art, art scene will host the Art, art of Palooza that will be this Tuesday at 6 o'clock here in our fellowship hall. On Wednesday, uh, the PNC will meet at 4 o'clock, followed by a 5.15 wow with um, a discussion on the Lord's Prayer uh, led by Reverend Hamby. Uh, we have yoga twice this week in the Fellowship Hall on Monday and on Thursday, and then the veterans will gather in our Fellowship Hall prior to the Veterans Day Parade. They will gather at 9.30 in our Fellowship Hall, and if we could have a couple of people here to greet them, that would be wonderful. Uh, and cookies, too. We like cookies. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. The sanctuary will be decorated for Advent by the first Sunday in December, which will be December 3rd. If you have a nativity set that you're willing to loan to the church for the uh, month of December, we would love for you to do that. Um, are there any other announcements that need to be made today? Okay, next, if there are any additions to the prayer request list or health issues. All right. Well, any anything else we need to talk about this morning? Okay. Friends, the proof of God's amazing love is this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Christ rose for us, and now Christ intercedes with the Father for us. So in faith and in penitence, let us offer our confessions to God. First, silently, our personal prayers, and then the confession you will find in the bulletin. Let us turn to the Lord. Let us pray together. Lead us home, O God, when we wander lost in wildernesses of our own making. Like errant children, we stray from the safety of our heavenly parent. We hear your voice calling, but we go our own way. We remember your teachings, but instead follow the foolish desires and whims of our hearts. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us home, where we will follow your path and do the work you have for us. Amen. Friends, we are called to confess, and when we confess, we know that God forgives us and loves us. So friends, believe the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord, we have been called here today to worship you, to listen to what you have to say to us through the scriptures. So let us listen, let us understand, and let us be transformed by your words. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first passage today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23. We will read verses 1 through 12. Let us listen for God's word. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be treated with respects in the marketplace, and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. <laughs> All who exalt themselves will be humbled. And all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our other New Testament passage today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. We will read verses 9 through 13. Let us continue to hear Paul as we have the last couple of weeks. You remember our labor, labor and toil, brothers and sisters. We worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you while we proclaim to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and God also, how pure, upright, and blameless our conduct was towards you believers. As you know, we dealt with each of you like a father with his children, urging and encouraging you, and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. We also constantly give thanks to God for this, that when you received the word of God that you heard from us, you accepted it, not as human word, but as what it really is, God's word, which is also at work in you believers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray together. Lord, when Paul and Silvanus and Timothy came to Thessalonica, they acted with what we would call integrity. Help us to live up to that same standard in all that we do. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be worthy and acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. When I graduated from college, 24, no, sorry, it'll be 20 years this year. All right, 20 years. I started college 24 years ago. I graduated high school 24 years ago. The graduation speaker at my college graduation at Sanford was a man named Stephen Carter. Now, I'm not sure if any of you know who Stephen Carter is. Stephen Carter is a philosophy professor at Yale University. And I didn't know who he, is, who he was from anything. But I was about a month before my graduation, I called my dad one day and I was like, yeah, dad, the grad, he was like, well, who's going to be your graduation speaker? And I 
it's like he's going to be Steve, uh, a guy named Stephen Carter. My dad was like, I love Stephen Carter. It's like, well, who's Stephen Carter? He was like, well, I bought this book a few months ago of his called Integrity. He said, so you need to drive home this weekend just for me to give you this book. Now, I only lived an hour and a half from Gunnersville in college, and so I did. I drove up there, and I got the book, and I read it. And it was one of the most fascinating books I've ever read. Because here's a man who writing about something, and this was 25 years ago now. He wrote it, I think, in 92, 93. I could be wrong. But talking about the loss of integrity in American life. And how in order to change ourselves and change where we were going, we needed to become people of integrity. So I decided to look up the word integrity. The quality of being honest and having strong moral principles. The quality of being honest. That fascinates me. Because it seems to me in today's life, and this has been going on for at least 15, 20 years, that it seems the way to get ahead is to fudge things, leave things half done, not do everything the right way, not always be honest, protect yourself over others, which is the exact opposite of what integrity really is. So I talk to my students about integrity as much as I can get away with it because, well, we have certain things we have to teach every day and blah, 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 the, the standard hateful things I have about education that you hear like twice a month from me. But I tell this story. My second year of teaching, I taught a student. His name was Davius Griffin. And if he ever stumbles across this on the Internet, I'm sorry I didn't ask for permission to tell this story. But Davius was a rambunctious young boy. I taught seventh grade at the time, and he was always seeming to get into trouble. But every time you got onto him for something, his response was, yes, sir. Every time he got caught doing something, he would say, yes, sir, I did that. He was honest. And always, for the entire year, he was always honest. Well, it comes to about March, and he comes to me one day, and after class and says, can I talk to you for a minute, Mr. Brock? I was like, sure, Davies, what's going on, man? And he said, I'm being accused of looking up something on the computers in the computer lab that I didn't look up. It's like, I promise you it wasn't me. I said, Davies, you've never lied to me in six or seven months that I've taught you. So I'm going to go to the principal and talk to him. And so I went up to the office and I went and talked to the principal and the assistant principal. I told him, listen, he has never once lied to me. He's done a lot of things, but he's never lied. And so the principal goes and begins to research and asks around and finds out it really wasn't Davius who had done it. It was a different student. And so I always tell this story to my students at the beginning of the year to remind them that if you are honest, I'll believe you. But if you ever lie to me once, why am I going to believe it? when you come to me and you really need something. Because see, living honestly may be the key about integrity. Living honestly. Being honest with who we are. Being honest with each other about where we are. Being honest about what we want in life and how we get there. And being honest in how we do it and find it. It's about being honest. And here we have Paul in our passage today being honest about the work that he had done in the church in Thessalonica. You know that we were blameless in conduct. You know that we encouraged you and urged you and pleaded with you to live a life worthy of God. You know that we are still giving thanks for you. You know that what we did was God's work, not our own. Paul is speaking about integrity, the integrity of the work of the gospel. And so I ask you to think about the church today. Not us in this single church, but just the church in the United States, the church in the world. Do we have integrity? Are we living honestly? 
You see, one of the biggest things teenagers don't like about the church is they think it's, quote, hypocritical. That's how teenagers are. They think everything's hypocritical. And I have to be honest, my favorite book is probably Catcher in the Rye, which is the guy about Holden Caulfield who thinks everybody is fake. Everybody's hypocritical. That being said, teenagers, that's their idea of the church. But why? Why is that their idea of the church most of the time? Part of it is because certain churches decide to focus more on personal morality. And then when they see people not keep those personal moral standards, they find it hypocritical. Some of it is because they've heard the songs of their childhood. They are no, we are Christians by our love. And yet they look around and they see churches that aren't loving to each other or to people. Too often, we don't have integrity. We're not honest with ourselves. And so when I talk to teenagers about this, and this is my individual and I'm not saying I'm right, but I try to tell them that the key is that the churches are made up of sinners. That's the first thing we admit. We admit we're sinners. We can't do it by ourselves. And so, yes, we are filled with hypocrites. But we as churches should be trying as much as possible to live with integrity in that process. To claim that we are not perfect. And we know that no one else in the world we are going to encounter is perfect. And yet we should love them. Or as Paul puts it, we should urge them and encourage them and plead with them to live lives worthy of God. Just as we should be doing the same for ourselves. <coughs> And so that leads us from our individual selves and our own personal integrity to the idea of the church, this individual church. What do we as a church believe is important? What do we think as a corporate we, what do we think is how we should be? And then my question is to have integrity is to go out and show that, to act that out. To be that idea. That's something that we need to figure out. We need to figure out who we want to be. And then how are we going to do it? Showing integrity in all that we do. Today in a moment we will celebrate those who have gone on those who have joined the Lord and as we celebrate them as we think about them let us be mindful of the integrity each of them showed in their own lives and the example of integrity that they would want us as a church to have going forward We can talk about sin, mistakes, bad choices, lack of love, but at the end of the day, we have to decide who are we as a church and will we act that with integrity. Let's be honest with ourselves and figure out who we want to be, as long as that is an, an image of God. Let us pray. Lord, sometimes it's hard to have integrity. Sometimes it's hard to be honest with ourselves and with each other. And yet we are called to be honest in what we do. As Paul was with those in Thessalonica, let us, therefore, be with those in Euphala, urging them and encouraging them to love you and to lead a life worthy of you. As you call us, and as you have called our saints into your kingdom and glory. Thanks be to God. Amen. My friends, let us stand and say what we believe using the Nicene Creed. You will find that on page 34 of our new hymnal.
Let us confess the faith of the universal church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and sendeth on the right hand of God. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. is an island entire of itself each is a piece of a continent a part of the main so with thanksgiving let us remember Lucy Barker Pomeroy. J. Dale Pass. Eric New. Albert Gabe Frankovich.
Norma Karen Foy. Jane Blondheim McMillan. Harry Murdahl. Mildred Collins Bradley. Jackie Reesh. Each person's death diminishes me, for I am involved in humankind. Therefore, ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for you. We have lit these candles for those who have passed in the last year. But let us take a moment, individually and together, to say the names of those who are on our hearts today as we remember our saints. Let us say those aloud. Wesley Brock. Please say the names of those on your hearts today. Death, be not proud, though some have called you mighty and dreadful, yet you are not so. For those whom you think you can overthrow die not. Poor death, not yet can you kill me. One short sleep past, we wake eternally, and death shall be no more. Death, you will die. Let us pray the prayer the Lord has taught us, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. Friends, in gratitude for all the blessings that God continues to pour into our lives, let us receive now God's tithes and our offerings.
Sunday morning worship service from the First Presbyterian Church, Eufaula, Alabama. The First Presbyterian Church is located in Eufaula, Alabama at 201 North Randolph Avenue, Eufaula, Alabama, 36027. The church phone is 334 687 2523. That number again, 334 687 2523.